Clap. Yay. Yay. Welcome back to the Omer, week four, day five. Woo. Hode of Netzach. Hode. Hode, again, is humility. And Netzach is endurance. And we're looking at humility in our endurance. Yes. Specifically, this is interesting, like knowing when to yield. Yielding, which is a result of humility, is an essential element of enduring. Standing fast can sometimes be a formula for destruction. What we talked about before, the oak lacking the ability to bend in the hurricane is uprooted. The reed, which yields to the wind, survives without a problem. Nice. We did talk about that. I forgot what day it was, but yeah, just that. Do I know when to yield out of strength, not fear? Mm. When am I often afraid to yield? Um, I've never been afraid afraid to yield, but I have been, I have yielded to fear too often, so, like, I need to not do that as much. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, um, I think something that I'm sort of learning right now, um, it's a really good lesson that I think has cycled back into my life, is, um, this notion of learning to, to have the moment of fear, um, and yield not to the fear, but instead of isolating because of the fear to um to reach out a little bit and maybe yield my ego a little bit so um when i deal with things that are difficult for me to hear or difficult for me to listen to or um i i feel like somebody is um speaking at me um if i can pause a little bit and try to reach out um with like really with like from a place of strength then um I, I tend to do a little bit better and the conversation tends to go better. Um, and that's a, that's a lesson that I'm learning right now, again. If um, you reach out to them to like ask them, why are you being mean to me, essentially? Essentially, it's, um, it's more like, so if somebody will say something to me, um, that'll cause me to be fearful or triggered or, or make, make it feel like they genuinely don't understand me or they couldn't possibly understand me. Um, and if I were to yield to that fear, I would isolate myself and choose not to converse anymore. I would say I'm done. But if I were to instead move from a place of strength, yield my ego a little bit and yield my need for safety, I can reach out wow. and then have, yeah. And then I can have that conversation um, with them and realize that I wasn't in danger or I was in danger. And if I was in danger, then I can isolate. But I have to make sure that it's not my ego telling me I'm in danger versus the actual event telling me that That's I'm in so danger. <laughs> Thanks. Because <laughs> like there's so many times when I have yielded from fear and, and I'm like this person's coming at me and I'm like okay whatever I'll just let them have their way because they're they're scary. I they're like from it. uh, it's not worth arguing. Or sometimes I consider in my head that I have won because because I yielded because I was like I don't I don't want to argue with this person, but maybe I sh I could have I don't know. If, it's a fake fire alarm. Everything is okay. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be loud. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get rid of that. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. No, I've yielded too often from fear and just gone and hid, basically. Or, or I mean, there, there's other times, too, where, like, this one kid in high school one time, like, we had a Japanese band come visit us, and one of the girls that, like, stayed at my house, her name was Saki, with spelled K-I. The drink is spelled K-E, and, like, in Japanese, we pronounce sake. And this, the guy, this stupid kid was like, oh, like the drink. And I was like, no, the drink is, because even back then I knew that. I was like, the drink is actually sake and the, like her name is Saki. And he was like, no, it's the same thing. And I was like, whatever, I'm not going to fight this. You're so stupid. And so it's like, like, I don't know. I considered myself the winner in that case because like, even though. Like, I still think you were the winner in that I, case. I backed out of it. Like. I, I, it's like, I don't know, I, I, I could see that this kid is not going to change and not going to understand the difference between the key and the ke sound. So, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I think you were still the winner in that instance. <laughs> um, also, as with Hode in general, we talk about God often. Hode of Netzach is the humble recognition and acknowledgement that the capacity to endure and prevail comes from the soul that God gave each person. This humility does not compromise the drive of endurance. On the contrary, it intensifies it because human endurance can only go so far and endure only so much, whereas endurance that comes from the divine soul is limitless. Do I attribute my success solely to my own strength and determination? Am I convinced that I am all powerful due to my level of endurance? I do sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I have that tendency also. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at all the things I've done. I know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I'm all amazing. the things that I fit into a day and 
or like the fact that like I don't know my, my sister for instance will be like I don't know I need my cave time now I'm tired I'm like there's still so much time left like we could do this we can play this board games we could do this and we can go on a walk and and like I don't know if she listens more to her body or if like if she is underestimating her endurance or if I really am that much better than her I, I don't know but <laughs> so it's like I don't know I, I guess I again it's like hard to think of God and that maybe I was given more endurance than her, physical endurance, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I definitely tend to look at it like, hey, look what I've endured, look how great I am, I'm so resilient, blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, there are times where I forget that that resilience is not like my own, right? Like my ability to be resilient is as much a gift from the divine as um, as the fact that I endured it all. Like, like it's, all of it is for me. I'm I'm very comfortable talking about God, um, so I'm very comfortable talking about the divine. But um, but yeah, I think that I keep. I need that reminder. I think Hoda is an important one for me. Yeah, I know. Like it's one that I still have. Like because I'm not comfortable with God. I'm still learning that a little bit. And um, and you don't like have to be necessarily. Like that's not like like I understand required. that. Yeah. Like, I do believe there is God and, like, that kind of force and stuff like that. But um, as far as... And I do pray every night and imagine that I'm talking to somebody. But <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's it's still difficult for me, I, I guess, because of my fire and brimstone kind of... up. Not, not that, like, we weren't raised with this, but because it was all around me in the South, like, it's still hard to get rid of that image. You still, got, <laughs> you still got the religious trauma yeah, even as a byproduct. <laughs> even if it wasn't my religion and it wasn't my household. Or even going to like church or, or temple or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Um, where do I get the strength at times when everything seems b so bleak? Um, so I recently went through a time that was like really, really difficult for me. Um, and I don't quite think that like everybody knows how difficult it was for me, but it was really, really rough. And um, for me, it was, it was super hard. Um, and so I was living minute by minute, just trying to deal with like the minutes as they came. Um, and for me, it was a lot of reliance on the divine. Like for me, it was a lot of like, all right, I'm doing this thing because I know this is the next right step. I know this is how I'm supposed to be. I know this is the step that I'm supposed to take. So I'm doing that thing. And not really thinking about anything past that like next hour or that next day. Um, and eventually I got out of it um, and I'm out of it now. I'm, I'm crying a little bit as I talk about it. But um, for me, it was making sure that I was living in the moment and also reaching out um, to my friends, allowing them to be like a gift to me, allowing allowing the people around me um, to show up for me and being very vulnerable about it and recognizing that this was like beyond what I was used to. Yeah. Um, and so that was that was good. Like people showed up for me. It was really nice. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, when's the last time something seemed so bleak in my life? And really like the I hope the, you never experienced no, it. No, <laughs> I mean like the worst thing really was me separating from my twin and that like they they'd be in the other room sleeping together and I'd be sleeping alone. Like and it's like I didn't sleep alone for my whole life. It, like even in college I had r roommates and whatever. I mean like not in the same bed but like and like me and Kim never had the same bed either, but like, um, in the same shared space, just and... that. And like, here I am alone, like for the first time in 26 years. And it was, that was really when I started to pray and like had to work my way out and, or like moving, separating to a whole other state helped. And so, yeah, I don't know, I guess talking to other friends, especially, and just trusting that things could get better and, uh, also, changing spaces helped a lot. If you have the ch chance to do that, I don't know. Like, it's not like if, if maybe the thing that you were that was bleak was you being like in a bad job or something. Maybe if you really like that job, then find what you can to get through it. Otherwise, leave the job. And and or maybe moving houses somehow will help you with the job. So, however, I don't know, it works for you. Whatever you can think of. So nothing's really been bleak in a long time. Good. Except for the fact that my, my landlord hasn't way. paid me back. Like, <laughs> but I mean, that's not horribly bleak. It's not like I'm in danger of my life or whatever. Yeah. Exercise. When you awake, 
Acknowledge God for giving you a soul with the extraordinary power and versatility to endure despite trying challenges. This will allow you to draw energy and strength for the entire day. So if you're aware um, a Jewish day starts at night and then so like if this was the same day like you're going to you're going to hear this video at 6 p.m. ish or something like that and then think about this exercise and tomorrow when you wake up do this. Yeah. Acknowledge God for giving you a soul with extraordinary power and versatility to endure despite trying challenges. I really think um, one of the Jewish prayers that we like say in the morning is we thank God for restoring our soul back to us and we sing the soul that you've given me is pure. Um, and it's this idea that like every day is a new chance and that God believes in us every day by restoring our soul to us. That's God's little tap on the back saying, I know you can do it. I know you can do better. Um, I know, I know you've got this. And for me, the idea that like, I get another chance every day, like I really, I'm doing something every day. Um, and that I'm believed in every day is really important to me. Um, so maybe that will resonate with you. That's I don't know. so nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hope the, hope, yeah, this is again a hard one for me. It's not for Haley apparently, mm -hmm. but like, <laughs> well, I hope that you get something out of this and go forward and just, I don't know, endure, but don't force yourself to and be aware that your endurance comes from somewhere. And so some people are better at it than others. I don't know. The, the things are not given equally. So that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.